Everything good. We are on time. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to We Working Women live stream. Today we are delighted to have to invite so uh, so we are in uh, as our guest. So before I start uh, the conversation with Sylvia, so I need to introduce her because uh, really she ha uh, has a lot of experience in uh, uh, his career and as an entrepreneur. So say hello to everybody, Sylvia. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so happy to be here. Excited for tonight. Yeah, thank you. So I, uh, Sylvia is the CEO of Return Beer and uh, e-commerce e returns platform powering Canada's first nationwide returns drop-off network and a notable leader to watch in Canada's tech ecosystem with over 18 years of experience in technology. Uh, Sylvia has held past roles at eBay and Google and most recently was a general manager at so uh, Shopify where she worked on products to help early stage e-commerce merchants grow their business. Sylvia is also a founder of Amidira, is it? Pronounce it right? Amidira? Yes, Amidira. Oh, okay, Amidira, a Toronto-based startup helping uh, patients and caregivers fight cancer through gift, uh, gift boxes and the lifestyle content. Sylvia is an active speaker at tech industry events, such as Elevate Women in Products, SMX, and Big Data Toronto, and was named one of Canada's... Oh, I got this one. I'll just hold up. Uh, was named one of Canada's uh, inspiring 50 women in tech in 2018 and Bay Street Bowes 30 women of the year in 2022. So I'm so excited to uh, uh, have uh, Sylvia join us today. And uh, I prepared so many questions. And the audience, if you have any questions, need wants to ask Sylvia, so welcome, just write it down. I can uh, check it out and ask, ask Sylvia about that. So let's start. So yeah, you are CEO of uh, Return Beer. Can you tell us more about uh, your company? Yeah, so the e com uh, the company deals with e-commerce returns. So, you know, during the pandemic, everyone wanted to buy more online, right? Uh, and we got used to it. So even coming out of the pandemic now, a lot of the e-commerce companies are seeing really high return rates. Uh, on average, what I'm seeing now is somewhere around 20 to 30% of the orders that we make online get returned, uh, especially for clothing and for shoes. Uh, and there's also this big trend where we as consumers like to buy multiple sizes to see what fits, and then we return the things that don't fit. Uh, so it's creating a huge problem because returns are costly, uh, especially here in Canada, you know, our shipping rates are very, very expensive, right? Uh, so for the brands themselves, it's very expensive to their bottom line to take returns back. Mm -hmm. uh, so what Return Bear has done is launch a national network of drop-off locations. Uh, so you can go into our various partner locations that could be a Bay location, like a Hudson's Bay store, or a Cadillac Fairview Mall, or one of the convenience stores that we're in through our, our Pudo uh, network, like a pickup drop-off network. Uh, and then from there, you can basically return an item and get an immediate refund without having to package your items or put it in boxes and print out shipping labels. Uh, and that way, because we're getting um, the consumers to, to basically go to these drop-off locations, uh -huh. we're saving the brands and the shipping costs, giving out at the same time refunds faster to consumers. Uh -huh. Uh, and then ultimately, it's better for the environment because the items don't have to travel as far um, using our network to get back to where they need to go. So we have a lot of international merchants who sell in Canada. And without having a provider here, a lot of times they have to get goods shipped back either to the States, to Turkey, Spain, China, wherever it is. Uh, but here, what we do is keep all the return goods and then we send it to the next consumer who needs it wow. and buys it without having to ship it overseas. So that's uh, where the environmental benefit comes in. 
Well, that's really、uh, helpful because I, I'm like I'm not、uh, like a shop that much, but usually when I shop, and special clothes and the shoes, right?、Mm. Like it's just not match my size. So sometimes <laughs> it just feels so bad, right? You need to return it, but it takes、uh, so much、uh, time. You need to pack everything and then send it back. Yeah, it's、uh, pain. <laughs> yeah, that that's true. And I know a lots of people they just buy everything they like and then just try it on and then just return the rest. Like maybe only keep a couple piece of、uh, of what they buy. Yeah, yeah they bought. Right. Yeah. yeah.、Uh, and. And so yeah, I know you like from a tech industry, and you are really active member, like to talk about women in tech, and uh, uh, it's fast growing industry. But there is a、uh, not enough diversity. I heard a lot, and even you check it online when、uh, people talk about tech, it's majority of. Special man. So, uh, uh, can you tell us, like, how did you start your path into tech? And、uh, when you choose this industry, is really what you want, or later you, uh, you found that's your career? Hmm. Yeah, I think it, it, it's interesting. I don't think I ever thought I would be in tech. Like, I didn't grow up wanting to be in tech. I thought I would be either an architect or an interior designer or, or something that was, you know, straddling arts and, and a little bit of science.、Mm-hmm. Um, but I ended up going to University of Waterloo to study systems design engineering, and it's very broad, generalized program. <laughs> and, had、uh-huh. and because of the co-op program,、uh, it's like work placements. I got placed at software companies because it was during the dot com boom. Oh. That's hiring for these work placements.、Uh, so I got hired into software companies、uh, to do my work placements.、Uh-huh. Uh, ended up picking up、uh, coding skills from there. Wow! So when I graduated, the options before me for jobs were all coding related because I I was doing coding <laughs> as a student, but it wasn't it wasn't a、uh, very thought through choice. You know, it was just where the opportunities were, and I happened to like it.、Mm. Uh, so when I graduated, my first job、uh, ended up being in analytics.、Um, so I was doing a lot of、um, coding of reports and then writing a ton of SQL queries.、Mm-hmm. And from there, I ended up、um, going to work for eBay internally with their、um, internet marketing department. Again, doing analytics. And so,、uh, yeah, it, it's interesting. I think the path kind of found me as much as I I picked it. It was very opportunistic. Oh, I got into tech. Yeah, yeah. Because I checked your、uh, background. I know you graduate from <clears throat> from、uh, Waterloo University of Waterloo. Like、um, mm-hmm. when people hear about Waterloo. Uh, like they just assume that's gonna be in tech or、uh, engineer or something like that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah.、Um, but yeah, no, I have plenty of friends in the same engineering program who aren't in anything tech related.、Oh, right.、Oh. Some of them are in finance. Some of them are doctors. Some of them are. I have a, a friend who got into botany. <laughs> what? <laughs> Or, or like you know, dealing with plants. Oh,、um, okay. Yeah, or there's a chef. There's like it, the program that I was in was very, very broad. Oh, okay. Yeah. So、uh, uh, at your early uh, uh, job,、uh, and did you encounter any barrier or for being a woman or being an, a minority? Yeah, I've always been in an environment that has more men in, than women. Uh, the engineering class that I was in at Waterloo was probably one of the better ones in that it was a third woman.、Mm-hmm. Um, but the computer science classes that that we were in, there were four women out of four hundred people. Four、yeah. women out of four hundred.、Oh, yeah. Okay. So I knew every single woman there.、Oh. There were only four, <laughs> um, but like yeah, going into work, it, it was rare、um, for me to have other women and ro- women role models. But、mm-hmm. it, early on, the funny thing is, I don't think I realized it.、Mm-hmm. 
I didn't go around thinking, oh, where, where are the women around me? It wasn't until much later that I started coming across the fact that I am a woman actually might mean something for me. Like I was so naive mm -hmm. in the beginning about it. Um, looking back now, I think my first like few jobs, I probably, I did run into issues, but I didn't realize it at mm -hmm. the time. My boss at eBay, he kept on telling me that I need to speak up with more confidence mm -hmm. because I wasn't being heard. And when he first told me that, I thought it was just me. Like there's a problem with me. <laughs> but later on, I realized it's not just, well, I mean, it is me, but also like a, a lot of women have that same issue, right? Mm -hmm. When you're put in a group full of men, it's hard for us to be heard. Yeah, Our voices aren't the same tone. We don't butt in, we're not as aggressive we don't project as much. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, looking back at a lot of the feedback that I got when I didn't know it then, but mm -hmm. a lot of the feedback that I got was related to likely the fact my gender mm -hmm. and the fact that I'm a woman. Uh, and some of it I'm just learning now, honestly, uh, this year. So I'm 18 years into my career now. And mm -hmm. this year I got a voice coach to help me, you know, be better at my public speaking. Mm -hmm. And my voice coach started noticing that as good as my English is, I miss out consonants when I speak, especially on single words. And she realized that it's because of my Cantonese speaking background oh. that I miss these words out. And she coaches Olivia Chow also right now. Uh, it's, she's realized this is a trend. When you're speaking a very tonal language like Cantonese, you rely on the tone more than the actual consonants. But in English, if you do the same thing, you're not enunciating enough and people can hear you wrong. Oh, I, that's really a special, uh, t uh, the first time I, I heard about that. Yeah. Well, actually, I just did it. It's funny. If my coach is here, she would tell me, I just said, people can hear you wrong. Uh huh. That G, I said wrong uh, without the G at the end. Oh, wrong. <laughs> uh, I don't notice this, but my husband, when I told him, he's like, yes, this is why I never hear what you say. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's, yeah. I think, like a, maybe from a, a normal, like a day, day, uh, daily work, maybe we don't realize at all. Uh, like for me, like I have accent for sure from uh, uh, like for English, like I speak English. So that's going to be a bigger problem if like that. <laughs> yeah, I can understand you fine. Um, it's, yeah, I think it's the small things that catch yeah. me, mm -hmm. you know, it's these small things. I, I never thought that my English was not being heard, mm -hmm. uh, but now I'm being told that it is. Um, but same thing, I never thought that that my own insecurities or, or lack of confidence was, you know, a thing until my manager said, you need to speak up more. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, cut the men off if you have to. <laughs> yeah, I heard like a really like I think this is not only you, not there is a, a large number of like, uh, uh, I think women have this uh, problem because I, uh, I remember I watched one uh, YouTube video and in United States, uh, one uh, women just uh, uh, like uh, they teach uh, girls to coding uh, for how to code. And uh, she found it out like uh, compared to the boys like the girls usually uh, they do almost everything right but not perfect right so usually they they erase it everything erase everything and uh, the boy like even they do it maybe only half of the girls what, what the girls uh, have done and they just saying like i know how to do it and the girl usually said i didn't do it like i i don't know how but later they found it out they she almost finished everything, uh, just maybe yeah. tiny, small, little mistake, and then she erased everything. I think that's it's just when we grow up, uh, maybe the society or our parents just teach us as a girl, we need to be perfect. So that's uh, maybe because of that, we are not 100% confident sometimes when we talk. 
Yes, definitely. Yeah, there's a very consistent research yeah. about how we can, yeah, we don't ask for raises as often because we don't think we're qualified and because we don't think we're qualified for jobs, we don't ask for promotions as often. We don't apply for the same amount of jobs as men do, but even with the same qualifications. Um, yeah, there's a there's a lot of um, things to dig into there. Mm, yeah, that's true. And now you'll start to speak up. Like after 18 years, like I see so many interviews with you, and then you uh, like uh, you uh, so many time like. Uh, uh, you talk in different events, tech events. I think that's really uh, benefits a lot from like for us, right? We when we watch, like we can learn, and then uh, we have we can have the confidence to to speak up. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, yes. No, it's been very important to me to speak up about it. Yeah, because yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it impacts us all, and then you know. I don't know how many, how many mothers are listening to this, but especially be, when I became a mother, it also became important because I have, well, I have two boys, mm -hmm. um, but I want to raise them in a way where they can help with this thing and not actually be a part of the problem, you know? Wow, that's really, that's really. Yeah, and well, but I see it, like I see it in their schools or um, actually, well, right now, um, and you know Ashley and I have our kids in the same school mm -hmm. uh, but we've been uh, I've been thinking about um putting the, my boys in a new school and you know there are single gender uh schools up there still oh. uh, so with that I've been debating with my husband whether you know it's a, it's a good thing to be sending boys to a single gender school because from my perspective it starts young like if you if we teach our boys to only deal with boys when they get out there how do they treat the women it, it's uh some of these problems, I think, are, start very, very early. Yeah, I think yeah. from uh, even uh, from the society, maybe some just some words they pick it up, and then they have that kind of uh, like in their mind, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I know uh, you were general manager at uh, uh, Shopify, and uh, like uh, our um, members, are so many uh, people working in uh, the corporate. And how was the path to get into the senior leadership role? So can you give us some uh, advice? That's actually very similar to how I started in tech. I've always just chased the opportunities. Um, you know, actually, this is a bit of career advice that I give to a lot of people like that come to me for, for advice. Like I come across a lot of people who say, you know, I want to be a VP of product here, or I want to be a director of engineering, or I, I want to be a C-level. Mm -hmm. um, but usually when I ask them why, or like, what what would you have done to give you, yourself that title? Or what do you imagine that title holding in, in for you in terms of what would you have changed in the world? And for the most part, unfortunately, especially when I'm mentoring younger people who are just new to the workforce, mm -hmm. there isn't a, there's no answer. It's you want the title, but if you don't know what you're actually trying to change, it's very hard to understand how you achieve that title. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so for me, got, getting to where I was, was or I am has always been around the problems that I want to solve. And that's the advice I would give a lot of people, too. Like if you're looking for, well, especially in a corporate world mm -hmm. to get to that title, like I mean, you can always take your own path and be an entrepreneur and create the title for yourself. Mm -hmm. That's a path. Uh, but if you're in a larger company and you kind of want to climb that ladder, so to speak, or the jungle gym, whatever we, you want to describe it, um, yeah, my advice would be to actually just chase the problems uh, and and decide what problems you want to solve and what you want to see as a change that you, you yourself bring, and the titles will come. The title. You know? Oh, the titles will, will come. And that's... Yeah, uh, come, like, do the, the, do the job. And you will be awarded the title. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, what is that job? It really is, what is that job? Yeah. Uh, yeah, like the GM title um, at Shopify. I originally joined Shopify to help them do product operations, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of a newer field in Silicon Valley tech, uh, where the product teams have gotten large enough that they need a way to operate better. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started with that. And the GM role, when it first came around, I, I didn't like it. They had an opening um, 
and I didn't really even consider it. Like it, it got shared around. I opened it. I opened the file. I closed it. I'm like, this is not what I'm here to do. Um, but it, it's it was interesting because when I started thinking later on about what what am I actually trying to do here, uh, and the problems that I'm trying to solve for Shopify and the products that I want to create, it actually became that job description. Uh, and so I ended up um, applying and getting the job, uh, but mostly because I had already decided that that's the stuff that I want to do. Uh, and so going through those interviews, it was very easy to convince people that I should be doing this because I was already doing it. <laughs> What's the thing? Uh, so I remember this because the CFO interviewed me, the CEO interviewed me for that very specific job. Mm -hmm. And I went to them and I was like, look, look, I've been doing this. Is this not this job? <laughs> Uh, and it's like, well, you can give you the job or you can not, but like either way, I'm already going to do it. This job just speeds it up because mm -hmm. now you're going to be investing in me. You're going to put a team around it. There's going to be money ar mm -hmm. around it. Mm -hmm. And I can achieve that goal for you faster in this role than if you don't. Um, yeah, so I don't know if that answers your question, but uh, it's that's how I got to at least that GM role. And because I get asked this question a lot of the time, my advice to other people is, mm -hmm figure out when you want to be building yeah i think that's another way uh usually like we got answers uh like you follow what's uh like always the corporate have this and that to do the network uh but today what you just uh, uh like saying i think there's another way uh to see this uh, how to promote yourself uh, in the corporate world and always chasing the problem, solve the problem, and the title will come. Uh, that's really, I think uh, there's another, this is the right way <laughs> to, to see, to promote yourself. Yeah. Right. Well, I am lucky. I have also unfortunately come across a lot of women who do that work and solve the problems and still the title doesn't come. And it's, yeah, unfortunately, a lot, a lot of women in tech have, like experience that. So I will say I've been lucky because I haven't felt like being a woman in that case has ultimately stopped me. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, I will say that because I've had other women cry in front of me saying, hey, I thought I did it, but the man got the job anyway. <laughs> with less qualifications so. yeah, yeah yeah maybe uh i think sometimes we need to like uh, come back to the uh the question maybe we need to speak up and uh, right now I, I just see like there's a couple of questions there like when people are watching they ask question and uh, there's one uh, woman asked how to get a wise coach how do you get a voice coach? Yeah, how to get a, wo a voice coach? <laughs> how, how do you huh. get a voice coach? <laughs> I got, actually, I got a recommendation from another Asian lady, uh, Jenny Lam, who was the president at Wattpad. Uh, she recommended a coach to me. Uh, so if you want that recommendation, I highly recommend that I, the one that I have. I, I'm happy to pass it over to you if somehow you get I don't know how we can get contact. Yeah, okay. you, maybe you yeah. can uh, email it to me so I can yeah. <laughs> pass it on. Yeah, pass yeah. it on. Yeah, I think that the, they are really excited to hear what you're just saying, and they, they yeah. want to get wise coach too. Yeah. And, oh, the other one I would also recommend Toastmasters um, for a good source of voice coaches because they do a lot of you know speech and voice work. So I've come across a few in that network. Okay. As well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Uh, uh actually there actually said good advice and does the voice coach make you feel more confident actually mine does okay yeah yeah uh, but uh, yeah there's a trick to I, I have found that there's a trick to voice coaches they they diagnose your problem okay with, right yeah um so yeah, if you find a good one they will tell you what you need to work on uh, one thing I actually am practicing with this call is I have problems doing eye contact, mm -hmm. uh, especially in Zoom. Okay. I'm trying to look at you, Sherry, on the screen, but you're on my left side. Yeah. But if I do that, then I end up, like, if I do this, I end up looking over there and okay. not at the camera. So it's one of those things. Like they, will die, they will come on these calls and help you diagnose. <clears throat> oh. You know, I also do this. I naturally do this too much, but you really want to be, you know, yeah. Yeah. 
Ogenam, huh? Ogenam, to be, yeah. yeah. I, I remember I read that book because <clears throat> uh, 12, uh, 12 rules of, uh, it's a Jordan Peterson in the uh, mm. University of Toronto that a professor right. wrote it said uh, we stand should be like a lobster like a one before you do anything like you should straight up right right to make you feel like you are big uh that's uh in front of uh, uh any important uh like a meeting or anything like we need to stand like straight like make our feels like we are confident no matter we are confident or not but First, when we stand up like that, we're going to feel confident, more confident. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, it's also looking confident to the audience, right? Yeah. I, and I, this is one of those things I learned over time. But when early in my career, I didn't realize this. You know, you sit in a group of men and they're all like, like, yeah, like this. Like this. <laughs> tell me something like like this yeah and then, so if you're the woman then you're like yeah i mean you're just being you like i i, I actually do this and then do this with your hair uh -huh. <laughs> it, it's yeah. not the same feel yeah right yeah, yeah that's yeah. true yeah so yeah like yeah. i like to that people know me for me and won't judge me but that's it's just not yeah. reality yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but sometimes, like you, uh, maybe for ourselves, we didn't realize. Like I think, like those small things, like maybe you didn't realize at all. But once people telling you, oh, you start all oh, like that, it's better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I know you. You've been uh, the CEO. Uh, like uh, you are a couple, two times or three times, like uh, startups, and. Um, uh, being a CEO, is it what you thought it would be like? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I don't know. I mean, you're, you're, you're an entrepreneur too. I would love yeah. to hear what you've been thinking. Like, it's just, oh yeah, maybe I was also naive about, you know, um, mm -hmm. or I actually, you know what? I think the, the, mo the part that caught me by surprise the most mm -hmm. it's just the the impact that it actually has on my family to be doing this it's, oh yeah because being ceo it just requires way more hours out of me than i think i i've had even at working at other startups mm -hmm. um and so yeah what it means now for my family and my, and my kids when i have more working hours uh i don't think i i necessarily planned for that um, but yeah, I, I think also being a CEO and it, it makes a difference being in that seat versus in another seat, even on a leadership team at a startup, uh, because you, in the end, you just have more of the worries, right? You don't want to put everything on your team. Um, and then, yeah, there's always the ups and downs of the startups to ride up. So, uh, I think I knew it mentally, like I, I knew what the role would entail, but it's different to feel it. And it's different to also feel it at home. Uh, yeah, I think that's the part that that caught me the most off guard. Yeah, but it's not it's not like bad emotions necessarily. I also like I love it generally. It's just it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I I can see like what you're saying. Like you you could uh, you don't have enough time to stay with your two two boys. Do you feel guilty at the beginning about that? No, I'm guilty all the time. Because <laughs> <laughs> I heard, I heard so, uh, like from our uh, community, like there are so many en entrepreneurs. Uh, sometimes they just talking about like when they go back, the boy, like the kids already sleep, and I feel so guilty, cannot be with them. Yeah. So how how you uh, manage that? Like when you feel uh, guilty. I try to like not or yeah, I try to put it in my calendar and make a very specific um, time block that work can't encroach in. Um, but I also try to make it so that like uh, if there's a bad, bad period of time where I'm very, very busy that I, and that I force it a break in that schedule so I can spend more time with them. Um, you know, there may be some weekends where I'm working through, but like then, you know, there'll be a whole weekend where I take them away and we 
go on a mini weekend trip, um, something like that. Mm -hmm. But I think that would be the hardest part is actually being very, very present when I'm there. Because I find even if I spend 10 minutes with them every day, but I'm very present in that 10 minutes, they would rather that than me spend, you know, a whole day with them, but I'm, you know, I'll distracted by my phone or, yeah. or trying to work on a sales deal at the same time, right? Yeah. So it's just it's getting that 10 minutes in where I'm totally focused. Uh, not to say that it's easy, but it, I mean, it sounds like it should be easy. But 10 minutes when they're, they're not listening to this, if they're talking to me about Minecraft <laughs> or other video games that I don't care about, really. <laughs> it's hard because it's full 10 minutes of, okay, I really want to hear about what, what's going on in your life. Yeah. I, yeah, that that's really like sometimes we just think 10 minutes, it's just two minutes, a short, peri a short period of time, but it's really, um, when we, <clears throat> my experience, like, because I don't have kids, usually my uh, husband say to me, said, yeah, you are talking to me, you're sitting with me, but your mind not with me. Oh, yeah, right. It's just yes. like, oh, okay. So sh he realized you are not with me. Uh, so I said, okay, I realized that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, we have something in our family um, called the ACK. A C K, but we, we shorten the word acknowledge because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times I'm nodding, but I don't I don't hear them. Uh, yeah. So then they have to say, "Did you like? I, I need you to acknowledge this." <laughs> <laughs> it's like tell me what I just said so yeah. that I know that you heard me. Yeah, because otherwise they can have like you know two minutes of saying something to me and I I, I hear none of it. Yeah, because the man yeah. flying somewhere, yeah, somewhere else. else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, this is just towards like, uh, in your opinion, what are the most important quality as an entrepreneur? Mm. Resilience. Resilience, yeah. Yeah, like you're bound to like hit roadblocks and fail. Uh, and it's being able to get back up and do it quickly. And then also learn from it. Um, you know, I was actually at a talk two weeks ago um, by the founder of Nixware. I don't know if you heard of her, like Joanna Griffith. She built this, you know, billion dollar brand mm -hmm. um, for women's intimates. Uh, and she was there also with the founder of Majuri uh, that does the women's jewelry. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were both on the stage talking about their entrepreneurship journey. And it really touched me because they were both saying how in the early days they were in tears a lot of the time in tears oh, yeah. um, because of the challenges of starting their own company. Um, I have my days too, uh, where it's just like, oh my gosh, I don't know how this is going to work. Uh, and then also, even when it works, you wonder whether it's going to fall apart. All right. It, it's, uh, it's always the next challenge. It's like you've gotten one thing, but there's always another challenge uh, mm -hmm. and it never really gets easier mm -hmm. is what they were saying. Um, which I find very relatable. So yeah, it, it's the it's the resiliency of it. Like when you are, you know, hit with so many challenges and overwhelmed, and you're not sure what you're going to do next, is being able to you know take that breath, know that it's going to be okay, and then take that next step forward. Yeah, I think that I totally agree for that. Like as uh, as an entrepreneur or startups, it's really not that e uh, really not easy like so many things, uh, almost every day there is a challenges or there is a, uh, like, like what you said, up and down, up and down. You never know what's happened the second day, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that's, I totally agree. Uh, let me see what, what uh, we have here. Yeah. Uh, the uh, so do you have a mentor or uh, sponsor who help you with career advancement? Hmm. Like I do have a career coach that I use right now, mm -hmm. uh, but over the years, like if I, if I had to look across my entire career, I think I've been very lucky because I've I've had a lot of mentors over the years. Um, that one boss I told you at eBay who was telling me I need to be more confident, like he was definitely one of them. Mm -hmm. um, 
I've had, yeah, a lot of, I think I've been, again, lucky in that a lot of my bosses were very good to coach me through things. You know, sometimes you can get a boss and they, they, they don't. Um, okay. I've been lucky that way. Uh, and then also, like, by the time I was working at some larger companies like Google uh, and Shopify, they were pre-assigned coaches. It's just a part of the program. Okay. Uh, so I would get, you know, mentorship from there as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but there's uh, actually I wrote this blog post a long time ago uh, with 14 tips for women to gain uh, on confidence. Uh, and I did a talk about this at um, DevTO a few years back. Uh, but there, so I, I can go on and on about the subject, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, but on the mentorship piece, like I find a lot of women look for mentorship like they're looking for a spouse. You know, there's a check. It's a checklist. It's like, I want my a mentor who, you know, has done this before and has been here before and is a woman and I can relate to them and will be around. They'll be around for the next five years to see me through this. And then there's a giant checklist. It's like you're getting married. <laughs> the chances of you finding someone like that are very, very low, like very, very low. Um, so, yeah, like I, I think I got to where I am mostly because I found the mentorship wherever I can and I took it. Um, and I was given advice to do this. Uh, so when I was at Google, I actually approached um, a woman by the name of Tara Walpert uh, Levy. She led, led all, all of YouTube uh, for a while and is still doing a lot of, of stuff in the tech space in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, I found her super inspiring and I went up to her and said, hey, can I get you to be my mentor? Mm -hmm. And it was, I came with at her with this checklist. Um, but she's like, she's like, Sylvia, I would love to, but you can only have half an hour of my time. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, that wasn't on my checklist, but sure, I'll, like, I'll take half an hour, of course. Uh, and then in that half an hour, she called up my mistake and said, okay, you took my half hour. Now, now I'm, I'm willing to offer you more, Sylvia, but do you really need more than another half hour from me? And I said, no, you're right. I don't know if I need more. Like you told me a ton of stuff in half an hour. The next half hour, I think you can cover this. And it, it was super helpful. Uh, and then from then on, I pulled mentor, like got people to help me with little tidbits of their time as much as I can. Because when you add all of that up, you get more perspective and you get more push and help than you can in any one single person. So in this case, it's better not to be married. Find as many spouses as you can. And, and milk, like get your network and milk it um, as much as you can, would be my advice on there. Okay. So yeah. usually like when we, uh, like in, um, in the case, like I uh, met with so many uh, Chinese uh, women, they talk about like uh, uh, when they find, uh, try to find a mentor or a coach, um, and they usually like they, sometimes they feel just no connection just like what you were saying uh like i need to have connection like really help so you said they just grab uh, each every opportunities so uh every time did you prepare the question you want to ask or how like uh, tell us well, like, yeah, what I you that, prepared is, that is something that i have learned like there's nobody who's gonna do the development for you better than yourself mm -hmm. Right. So if you approach it as let me find somebody who will, you know, coach me for the year and I meet with them once a week, mm -hmm. it almost it's like you're putting the, the work onto them mm -hmm. a little bit. You, and you and you kind of free yourself. It's like, oh, well, I can relax. This person's going to help me. <laughs> uh, but it works way more mm -hmm. if you do the homework and go into every session and say, I want I need this. It it just is, it's gotta be like, we had a, a value at Shopify called own your own development. Mm -hmm. And it was essentially this principle. It, there is nobody who can help you better than yourself. Uh, and so if you're able to carve off what you need and be very clear and articulate about it, you'll be surprised. I, I think you would be surprised at how many people will jump in and help you with that thing. But you have to be very clear okay. about it, right? As opposed to if you go to a coach and said, I want a year of coaching and put me on a program, it becomes their program, not yours usually that that's really yeah. good advice and we got mm. uh, more uh i need my glass i don't <laughs> want to wear it in front of everybody but i have no choice I need to wear my glass yeah 
Hey, you look great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there's a. Uh, 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 Sue ask, how do you develop the stakeholders management skills, especially what's your tips to find the right way to engage with different stakeholders? Hmm. That's a good question. Well, first of all, I don't think I'm very, I'm, I'm great at stakeholder management, so I will say that first. <laughs> You know why? It's because I, I just me as a person, I find it very hard to let go of my values. So if I value something and you as the stakeholder don't value that, then I, I'm, yeah, I don't, <laughs> uh, I don't tend to bend uh, to people's whims. Um, but yeah, I guess it, it, for me, stakeholder management kind of really comes down to empathy. Right. It's understanding what that other person wants and what their worldview is and really, um, yeah, it is empathizing with what they're feeling and what they're going through. And once you have that understanding, things tend to go a lot better. Uh, and then you can also speak their language. Right. Um, I guess, it, yeah, the, the, it is very different also, like if you have authority, I will say, inside of the organization. Uh -huh. Because if you have the, if you have responsibility but no authority, that for me is the hardest way to manage your, your stakeholders. Because you don't have that authority, you can't just go into a room and dictate what will happen. Uh -huh. um, in that case, like I think there's, um, like in large group settings, if you're trying to do stakeholder management, there are like kind of, um, constructs like like fist of five or um, workshopping constructs that I would recommend you look into to manage stakeholders in, in a very specific meeting uh, session. Like so if it's a large group of 30 people in a meeting, you can look up like ways to manage that meeting to get to stakeholder alignment. Um, but if it's outside of that and it's a generalized, how do I manage stakeholders? I would say try to pick it apart usually. Um, it works better. You know, if you can meet with them one on one over coffee, in person is always over better over virtual. Uh -huh. uh, and if you can actually connect with people one on one, uh, it, it obviously helps a lot better than trying to manage them all in 30, 30 at a time in meetings. Uh -huh. Yeah, that that's true. And I th I think I uh, she said thanks. Uh, I think that that's really uh, the empathy is so important. Uh, sometimes there is a misunderstanding. It's not like a. Sometimes it's only because of a small issue. It's not big things like uh, to fight. It's just misunderstanding. And if you mm -hmm. just think from their point of view to think about it, and you understand why they are like saying like that. Oh, oh yeah, I, that that's yeah. really help. Yeah, yeah, no, that's very true. Yeah, actually, you know what? I I would say that vast majority of the disagreements that I have found, it when I'm running larger teams like at Shopify or or at Google, a lot of the disagreements come to purely the fact that people have different goals in mind, and if you don't ask the goals, you can argue forever about something. You know, if we're in tech, we were, well, I, I get in a lot of, large, lot of arguments over tech features, right? Mm -hmm. uh, should we build this feature or that feature into our ads, you know, product at Google? Um, and you have someone wants feature A, uh, someone else wants feature B, and you can be in whole meetings arguing over A and B. You can go on for days. It doesn't stop until you ask why B, like, what is your goal? And one person will be like, oh, it's because I want you you know, increase the number of um, users using the product. And, you know, why do you want A? Well, it's because I want more revenue out of the people who are already using our product. Uh -huh. If you have different goals, you're not going to align on A or B. Why don't you discuss which goal, goal is more important and then you can decide whether A or B. Yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. think that really helps. And usually, like, I know, like, there is always A-B test. 
like uh, there's uh, for two uh, options, like let like, uh, customer choose, right? <laughs> well, but, see, that was, that's still only, it's interesting you mentioned that, that still only works if you have a single, single goal. That goal. You yeah, that, that's You don't easy. agree when the goal, there's no testing. Yeah, right. that, that's true. <laughs> that's true, yeah. When they have the, the same goal and then they can do A B test, but if not yeah. the same goal, same goal. it won't. No, no, uh, no, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about like uh, uh, the um, Amidira. Uh, like, mm. I really, I, I think that's a Toronto based startup uh, helping uh, patients and caregiver fighting uh, cancer. So, how uh, at the beginning, how, how uh, you have that idea to fund that uh, mm -hmm. uh, company. Yeah, so six years ago, mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with cancer, breast cancer. Uh, so it was, uh, it, it was a very tough time for me. My kids were young. Then they were two and five. Uh, and when I first got the diagnosis, you know, you, you well, I was really young uh, as a person getting that diagnosis. So it hit me. It was a big shock. Uh, and I don't, I didn't get a good reaction. Like, I mean, I don't think anyone has good reactions to getting cancer, <laughs> uh, but being young and with kids, it made it even worse. Um, so my thoughts were all very, very negative. I didn't think I would be around to see my kids grow up. Um, but yeah, fast forward till now, um, I'm finished my treatments. I'm pretty much, um, well, I am cancer free and I have been for a while. Uh, so last, oh, it's been a year and a half now. I, when I finished all my treatments, I decided to give back to the cancer community and I created these gift boxes uh, with stuff that I wish I got when I was first diagnosed. Because um, I'm very, you know, my engineering background, I'm very data oriented. Uh -huh. So when I got diagnosed, I went to the library and I got, I got every single book on cancer that I could find. And I read them all. Um, and then I went through the internet after that on research on just all sorts of topics. Uh, a lot of the research was in complementary cancer therapies, what works, what doesn't, what has actually been proven scientifically to work and what, what doesn't. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, I was just surprised because I, you know, there's a lot that Western medicine does, but there's also a lot that Eastern medicine does. And as an Asian woman growing up here, it's very one-sided. You know, if you go to the Western doctors, they will only tell you one thing. If you go to the Eastern doctors, they will tell you something else, but it doesn't connect with what the other doctors. <laughs> and then there's a whole group of stuff in the middle that is, you know, the diet stuff, the, you know, massage therapy or aromatherapy. But there actually is a lot of research on that. It's not in anybody's realm. No doctor will tell you these things. Uh, so that's why I decided to push out with the, the cancer boxes was actually to push out some of this information and also include regular objects like um, regular products like massage balls and candles for aromatherapy that actually I found in the research has been proven in some cases to be very helpful for patients. Uh, and yeah, that's uh, what the Amadira story is. Wow. You are really uh, like what's called a uh I don't know the words. Is it right or not? Fighter like the you. I, uh, mm. I can imagine. I, I cannot imagine like uh, as what you said. Like have young kids, and uh, uh, you're facing that kind of challenges, and now you are. I I cannot imagine. Just I can't even imagine. But you are really, uh, been through so 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 much uh, for sure but you are really strong strong I, yeah i think it made it made me stronger yeah yeah i mean it also gave me perspective there were whole months where i you know i put myself in the free cancer programs <laughs> um but that meant i was spending my days with 65 year olds uh, or 70 year olds who have cancer because that's a typical age group uh, so there were whole months where i only spent time with 65 year olds and, and 70 year olds it really gave me perspective because uh, the things they talk about at that age when you get cancer is completely different than you know somebody of our age uh yeah. what we worry about day to day it's it's not not the same so it did, it did give me a lot of perspective on life Wow, I think that's gonna be like I I I want to know more about uh, uh, the other one like uh, the uh, Amid Amidira, right? So.
So maybe we'll find another time. I want to know more about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really, I think, going to help so many people. And uh, it's really sad, like in our uh, community, there is just one uh, beautiful lady, like a really, and a pass away. It's like, a, mm. uh, she gave us so, uh, like, a really shock us. And uh, it's, it, that, that's, I just realized, like, um, sometimes we just like we can fight for so many things, but if something happened, it's just like suddenly happened. But you've been through that uh, those things, and you are now like an entrepreneur. You have looks uh, from outside. You have everything. Like uh, we can like I cannot like uh, just imagine like you been through so many things. Uh, that's really. Inspire, inspired, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I guess that is the uh, the entrepreneurial, or I guess maybe even life journey. Yeah, right. You don't get to, yeah, you don't get you don't get to create it, create and solve problems and do all of that without the hurdles. And the same thing with with life. Yeah, yeah. The more obstacles you overcome, the more you get. <laughs> That's no true. pain, no gain. Yeah. <laughs> no pain, no gain. And I yeah. realized, like, uh, uh, before, like, I didn't realize, like, I've been through uh, some things, too. And, uh, like, before I, I, when I was in that situation, I just feel it's so bad. Why always me, this and that? But after, like, uh, a while, like, now, like, I really agree with, like, uh, Stephen Jobs, what uh, he said, like, everything... Uh, like uh, if you uh, watch back, like all the dots connect to the line, like lead you uh, what you are right now, right? Mm. That's like I really, like now I realize I believe that. So I just do everything every day, what I can, I can do the best. That's it. like nobody can uh, really knows what's happened, uh, but once yes. we have like a, we we do everything right like a, do our best i think the result already there is gonna come uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, actually you know what you reminded me of i read this leadership book one time it was very textbook style leadership book so all i did was list out different types of leadership to uh -huh. give you a sense of what you might want to be as a leader. Mm -hmm. So it talked about servant leadership. Uh, it talked about um, values-based leadership. It talked about charismatic leadership. Like it just listed all these out and it would describe it in full chapters. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was this one, th one that stuck out to me because I, I, I was going through the book. I was like, oh yeah, I can be a servant leader. Oh yeah, I can do that. Uh, mm -hmm. And some parts would ring true, other parts wouldn't. But there's this one called uh, crucible leadership. What, what that mean, crucible? Yeah, it's the whole idea that you don't get to leadership without hardship. And it went into all these examples of the greatest leaders out there all having gone through some horrible, horrible, traumatic experience. You know, it's like Nelson and Della. It's like, yeah. you don't go, you don't become him without having gone through what he did. You don't become Gandhi without having gone through what he did. Uh, and it just listed all these examples. And then at that point, I, I read this book when I was quite young. I remember looking at that and it's like, well, gee, my life has been too easy. <laughs> like, how do I get to being anything great if my life has been just too easy? I've been spoiled. I had a middle class upbringing. My parents have been great. Like, it's, it's too easy. Uh, and then when the, the breast cancer hit me, I know this sounds weird, but there's part of me that's like, ah, well, at least now I can say. Yeah, I can you'll be through it. <laughs> yeah, you'll get the, like, you are great, like a leader, right? Like that, well, that's yeah, really. Every experience makes you better. Yeah, uh, uh, that that's really like, uh, I, I believe when people feel everything happy, everything good, so why they need to change? Nobody wants to change. You're like, I'm happy, so I don't need to change. But only when you uh, suffered, when you feel the pain, and then you start to feel like, maybe at the beginning, just something wrong with somebody else, but later you find it out, like what I can change to change this kind of situation, right? Right, yeah, yeah. So we got a question again. I need to wear my glass. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so ask, what's your view on this argument, opportunities to be in a leadership position, but take a low ball salary because you are still young, you need time to learn? I, I don't find necessarily, or if you take my example anyway, of getting breast cancer at 35, I don't necessarily correlate age directly with experience like you, you can be very very old and be not experienced <laughs> or you can be very very young and be very very experienced in things. yeah uh, so i don't like yeah without knowing the situation if someone were to just say hey i think all the young people in the company should shouldn't be promoted and shouldn't get a certain pay because they're young i i don't i don't personally believe in that um uh, like I think younger people have less opportunity, like by time alone, they've had less opportunity, right? So there's something there, but I wouldn't blanket statement everybody in the company. It's just, it's demoralizing. Like, what are you saying then that if you're at that age, then you shouldn't push yourself to learn more and that there will be no exceptions made? That doesn't really make sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And another one is from Sue again. I constantly see many young leaders have been taken advantage in the career because they are young, especially young Asian women. And they have to fight for a fair salary and try 120% harder to justify their values. That's yeah, that one I unfortunately do find is is, is true. Yeah. I don't know if I have an answer for it though. Uh, only that, like, hopefully over time, as we get more and more women in leadership uh, roles, they can recognize that in each other better. Um, but even as I say that, I find that very it's it's tough. When I was at Shopify um, and as a GM there in the exec group, there were. It looks including the C levels and then the, the 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 GMs. It was a group of around what was it maybe twenty five of us, and only three of us were women. Um, and when I chat with the, the especially the the VP on the engineering side, who was also a, one of the other women, every meeting she would say, I, "I'm so salty <laughs> uh, on this woman issue because when you only have three of us in that group, it it only falls on the three of us. So the idea of at every level we are doing more. Like, because where, where would the time go? Like, there's only the three of us, but we have to interview women so that we can hire more women because they don't see women leaders. So we need to show up more. We need to do these talks. We need to recognize the other women on our team to make sure that they are fairly paid. But then at every level, because there aren't enough of us, we end up having to put in more effort. Uh, and that, I don't know if there's an immediate solve because if we don't put in the effort either, then we lose the chance to bring in more people. Um, yeah and yeah if that, you burn out that doesn't, but the thing is you don't even you burn out that doesn't help anybody either so yeah it's uh or the, the, yeah then I, I guess everyone's natural conclusion is let's start earlier because how did we get to so little people there in, in the c-suite well there weren't, weren't enough people in the end entering well why weren't they enough entering? this <laughs> they weren't in school why weren't they in school? <laughs> now it's like, okay, why aren't girls and like doing as much math or you know as interested in coding back in like you know grade five? Yeah, uh, yeah. Which then actually weirdly comes back to us as women as mothers. <laughs> yeah, that that's I heard from another uh, ladies, uh, another women Chinese women in tech. She uh, mentioned the same. She said, now, like I, uh, she said, when I uh, enter any like uh, conference, I immediately I'm going to see how many women. He said, not I uh, really want to do that, but like I just realized, like, usually, like, you see like maybe 100 people, but only maybe few uh, women, special in tech industry. And she just feel like she said, yeah, like, because same what you're saying like from the beginning we need to start from the beginning yeah yeah but you know it is yeah going back to my breast cancer giving me perspective it all the nurses that i've ever had going through my entire experience the ones who held my hand you know before my surgery all they were all women 
almost 100% women. Uh, so like if you look at the broader society, like the women have to come from somewhere. And the question is, where are you pulling it? Like, are we, <laughs> the women are great at handholding there and they're great also at tech, but we can't have 100% women in nursing. Uh -huh. or, or like we can't expect these other things where we love to have women without sacrificing somewhere. <laughs> yeah. The question is, where, 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 what jobs are women giving up in order to be there? If they're giving up being at home, being mothers, are we saying that it's better for more men to be there? Is it better for more men to be in nursing? Probably it's better for more men to be in, you know, kindergarten teachers. We have no men as kindergarten teachers. Yeah. Um, and then when you think about it more broadly that way, sometimes I'm not as sad about the women in tech thing. Maybe women are where, where we want to be, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. So uh, yeah. that's what you mentioned as a mother. Uh, you have two boys, but uh, you just saw, you was saying like you don't know how many uh, women in our live stream there. Uh, if you are a mom and teach your, you, you can like start uh, teach the kids uh, like uh, the, the girls when they are young and they can do a, uh, everything as uh, the boys can, right? The boys does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you have boys, make sure they uh, they treat the girls well <laughs> and are aware of what they say. I, I, I get into a lot of situations where I, uh, they're with their friends and it could be girls, it could be boys. And uh -huh. then later on, I ask them what they said. Uh, and I go to the parents of, of girls and sometimes the parents of girls will be like, yeah, the, the boys were saying some inappropriate words that made them feel uncomfortable. Uh -huh. And those are the things that I find if I don't teach them now, it's going to continue. Uh, yeah, and so it's making sure we catch it in those situations. Whereas that mom of the girl was like, well, I better teach the girls to be really good about taking it from, from boys. It's going to happen all the time. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't, yeah, it's a, it's a tough thing to get that. It, should we teach girls to be taking it all the time? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should get them to speak up sooner. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Speak up. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, we have uh, we already passed two minutes, but I we still have one question. Uh, from <laughs> so again, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> what do you think the unique strength of women as leaders, uh, as, le uh, as leaders in tech industry? Hmm. I think the unique strengths are, 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 are our perspective. Yeah, if I take like uh, Shopify as an example, when the pandemic hit, uh, the CEO Toby um, okay, was very adamant on switching over to virtual work fast. And there was almost a race by all the large tech companies to announce that they've gone completely virtual. I remember those weeks. It's like, oh, Twitter announced it at like 2 p.m. Oh my gosh, then we better go and announce it by 5 p.m. And, you know, then Facebook followed it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but looking back, like, uh, oh, it just as an issue, not to say that I'm faulting any of the tech companies. I personally feel that if we have more women in these tech companies at a leadership level, I don't know whether we would have moved or stayed in virtual work for as long. Like, I think we have more recognition among, among women that FaceTime is valuable. Yeah. Like, we are the caregivers and the nurturers. Being online all the time is not good for social, like, for, for your mental health. Yeah. And I see that recognition way more in women than I do in men. Um, yeah, so just as an example, like, because now obviously all the CEOs are cracking down, they want everyone back in the office. Mm -hmm. I personally think that people would have gone back sooner if we had more women and we would be better off. That's true. Just an example. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So our perspective as women, I, I feel like that oh, that was just an example. There's but there's many like where if we just brought our perspective of how we see things as as nurturers or as uh, caregivers or whatever roles we're playing, it, it, it helps a lot. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah I think like even in the pandemic, like uh, the uh, what's called Jim, the prime minister uh, in uh, New Zealand. Uh, that's the uh, women, and then they deal with it. It's better uh, than so many other countries. Yeah, that's just that's just a fact. Yeah, 
And then, well, yeah, I can go on like AI and the, all the algorithms when we train on data that's created by men, it becomes a male voice. doesn't matter if you put a woman's voice to it. Yeah. Uh, when I was at 500 PX, it was a plat. It's a high end Instagram for photography. We realized it was mass majority used by men. Yeah. And then when we brought in women to rate the photos and, and do the likes, and so it was completely different. Um, I don't know if this surprises anybody, but we had a lot of not safe for work photos being liked and promoted. Yeah, once you add in the women, we, we put in a different view. Uh, yeah, it just balanced it, so those things out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's true. Uh, so we're just saying thank you very much. And uh, I want to say thank you very much. Like, I so enjoy, like, uh, uh, have the conversation with you. Oh, me too. Yeah. And we are already past five minutes. Now it's 9.5. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. And I just see uh, there is a Helen just said, uh, uh, is this session recorded? Sorry, I missed quite a bit at the beginning. Yes, Helen, we do have the, uh, the same link. Uh, we're gonna replay. I uh, uh, replay it. You just click the same same link. You can watch it again. Uh, yes, you can watch it. Okay. So uh, thanks, uh, Sylvia. Uh, I hope like we're gonna have more chance to meet in person and talk with you. Like I really enjoy the conversation. Thank you very much. Oh, of course, we'd love to. Yeah. Thank you for having me, and thanks everyone for staying. Yeah. Thank you everyone. Bye. Like thanks. in the live stream. Uh, Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Have a good night.